Here we are once again, Michael Bettine here. And tonight we're going to talk about building your Sonic Toolkit right here on It's Cup of Time. Building your Sonic Toolkit is a very important concept. And we've talked about making sounds, purposeful sounds, in a previous episode. So I want to go over a couple of concepts here that I find really important. And probably the first and most important one is knowing the sound of each of your different mallets. And then not just knowing the sound of each mallet, but knowing the sound of each mallet on each instrument, whether it be a gong, bowl, bell. And you really need to know that because when you're deciding to play something, and hopefully you have some sort of sound in your mind that you pick up the right mallet to get the sound you're thinking of. And we're talking about, you know, we don't want to leave anything to chance. We don't want to just be playing randomly. And even when I'm improvising, whether it's a solo concert or I'm playing with other musicians, I'm always thinking about what I'm doing. Although often it's more on sort of an instinctive nanosecond scale. I'm still consciously thinking about what I'm doing and I don't just you know, grab the first mallet that's close to me because it's there. I always grab the right mallet for the sound I want to make. So you really need to, again, practice with your instruments. You need to know the sounds. For example, what sound will this make versus this mallet versus this mallet versus this mallet? What sound will each of these make on one gong? Let's say a 32 inch gong. Then, what sound will each of these make on a 28 inch gong, or a 24 inch gong, or a 20 inch gong, or a 16 inch gong. They'll all be different. Or on a singing bowl, or a bell plate. So it's really important, you know, to not only know your, your instruments, which you should, but know your mallets, and know the type of sounds they're capable of. And also, you know, where to hit specifically on your gong. Hit it in the center, you're going to get one sound. Hit it closer to the edge, you're going to get a whole different sound. Hit it between the edge and the center, you'll get another sound. And often, gongs will have specific sweet spots. Like it might be over here, where you'll get a certain harmonic or note, but only here, not on the opposite, you know, areas, but just this one specific spot on your gong. You might really hit a sweet spot, but it might not be with this mallet. It might be with this mallet. This has the right weight, the right hardness to bring out that specific sound you are looking for. So you really need to know your gongs, your bowls, your bells, your bell plates, whatever. You need to know them intimately. And you need to know where all the sounds are located on the surface. And then again, you need to know what each mallet will do and where on the surface of each instrument it will bring out different tones. And in, in most instruments, whether it's a gong or a bell plate, 
or even a singing bowl, but we'll talk gongs and bell plates right now, is hitting it in the middle and hitting it on the edge are going to get you very different sort of sounds. So you need to know, how is this sounding in the middle? How is this sounding more on the edge or in between? So know the sound that each of your mallets makes on each of your instruments. Like I said, nothing left to chance. You just have to know this stuff, and that comes from practice. If you want to be a gong player, it's really no different than being a piano player, a guitar player, violin player, or anybody. You have to practice your instruments. You have to be able to recreate the sounds that you hear in your head at will. Let's say you're playing a violin, which is a fretless instrument. You have to know where on the string to press to get the specific note you want. You have to know how to bow to get the specific sound you want. So those are important things. Now I can listen to recordings of myself that I've made, even ones from years and years ago. And I can tell you what gong or what bell or what bowl that sound is. And I can often tell you what mallet I used. And that's because I've played them so much. I've trained my ear. I've, you know, trained my mind to know these things. So again, it's no different than uh, a concert pianist or a violinist or a rock guitarist or anybody, a saxophonist, whoever, that they know their instrument and they know how to get the sounds out of it that they need for the music that they create. So that's really important. And this is all part of your, your sonic toolkit. These are ideas and techniques and things that you need to build up so that when you go to play your instruments, you have these tools available. It's no different than being you know, a carpenter. You wouldn't be a carpenter and have one saw and one hammer because that will only do certain jobs. You will have multiple hammers, multiple saws, multiple drills, you know, multiple tools. And you will know when you're trying to do a specific thing, build a specific thing, which tool will do the job. So that's what these are. These are tools. And we need to know how to use them and what they do. So we need to build up that that toolkit. And this is something I always tried to really emphasize to my drum students was same thing there. You need to have some sort of toolkit. So when you were playing, you can create whatever sounds you need, whether you're playing with sticks, mallets, brushes, what type of music you're playing, jazz, rock, country, fusion, whatever, is you have to have the right tools and then you have to know what to do with them. Other tools we need. Well, ideas is a big one. In your mind, you have to have ideas. For me, it's all about hearing the sounds I want to make before I make them. And again, that comes from practicing. Like this Peisty Earth Gong. I know it intimately. I've had it for ages. And I know where to play it to bring out specific sounds. I know what mallets will bring out those sounds. So I have that sort of thing covered. But more importantly, I can hear these sounds in my head. And sometimes I'll hear new sounds. And then it becomes an adventure to find out how do I create these sounds that I'm hearing. And sometimes it means getting a new type of mallet or even creating a new type of mallet. Like I have these specialty mallets here that I put together from a standard chime mallet. I have a heavy felt end. I needed something that gave me some versatility that I could play. 
my Burma bells, my bell plates, and my gongs with one mallet. Especially like tuned bossed gongs and other things. So I developed this mallet about 16, 17 years ago. And I've been using it ever since. So it's your creativity. Build up your creativity. Work at your craft. Don't just, like I said, randomly hit things. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, I want to hear somebody who knows what they're doing. I want to hear somebody who plays with intention, who plays with knowledge behind that intention, and also plays with heart behind that intention. But definitely somebody who knows what they're doing. So work at your craft. Practice. Practice all the time. Get to know everything. So that's it. Building a Sonic Toolkit. Something you can use. We'll see you next time. On It's Cup of Time.